Hey guys, this is Kendall Terry, and this is uh, part one of mitosis and cell division. We're going to start with a review of what happens in prokaryotic cells, specifically bacteria. Uh, they do binary fission. They don't have a nucleus. Um, they have a circular DNA. It is double-stranded, um, and it's just the cell membrane that's surrounding them. Really about the only other thing they would have in there would be ribosomes. Um, and it's a simple four steps that I've got identified on here. Now, depending, you can look, your book, I think, gives a couple more steps in there, but it's still the same about uh, process. Uh, you could have more or less, depending on how much you include in each step. Um, so we've got circular DNA starts to replicate. There will be one single point on the DNA that it will start to replicate, and it will actually replicate in both directions towards an end point. So it will start on one side and replicate to an end point, and it will stay attached at that end point for um, a little while during the cell division. Then eventually the DNA will separate from each other and the cell will elongate or grow so that it's ready to divide. And then you'll get the cell membrane and the cell wall will form by this area right here called the septum. The septum that forms right here and it starts to make that cell wall uh, and cell membrane pinch across through the middle. Eventually then you end up with two identical cells that are going to be produced by binary fission. Um, in essence, they're making clones of themselves. So in the eukaryotes, it's a little bit more complicated. And that's what we're going to look at today is then from here on, what happens now in the eukaryotes. So first we want to look at the eukaryotic chromosome. Many times we draw them in this X shape. That is the chromosome. We're going to talk about all the specifics of it in just a second. If we took just a small section of that chromosome out, we would find a scaffold protein that's got these uh, chromatin loops all around it. Most of the time we see them looped in eight, in eights, kind of like a flower around the middle point. That chromatin loop is made up of what we call solenoids, and that is DNA wrapped around a histone protein. DNA wrapped around a histone, DNA wrapped around another histone, DNA wrapped around a histone, and that's how it will be stored then inside of the nucleus. During mitosis, that will condense, 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 condense until you get to the chromosome itself. When we look at the chromosomes, there's a couple features we want to identify. The first is that every chromosome inside of the cell has a homologous pair. A homologous chromosome is similar in size, shape, and genetic content. One comes from mom, in this, case, in this case the red one. The other comes from dad, in this case the blue one. In the middle of that chromosome is an area that we call the centromere. That centromere will have a protein running through it called a kinetophore. A kinetochore, uh, sorry, kinetochore. That kinetochore protein will be essential later on. This chromosome here is made up of sister chromatids. Sister chromatids. This is the DNA. This is an exact copy of that piece of DNA. So sister chromatids are connected at the centromere, and that gives us that X shape for the homologous chromosomes. If we're going to talk about cells and how they divide, we look at what we call the cell cycle. So this takes us from the cell being created to the cell dividing. So all the way around and we give it a circle. Uh, the first phase after the cell is created, it will go in one of two ways. Riley Jones, if you're still here, could you come by Portable 4 and see Coach Cottrell? Riley Jones, stop by Portable 4 and see Coach Cottrell before you leave. All right. Once that cell is created, it will go either into a G0 track, which will be no chance of cell division. This is stuff like your muscle cells and your nerve cells. They'll stop at G0. If it is a cell that might divide later on, it will go into a G1 phase. And that is a normal growth phase of cell cycle. Um, it's just normally going about what it does. It, whatever it does, it, it grows, it it. Uh, produces whatever enzymes, whatever proteins, all of that good stuff, G1. Then if, it, if it's going to divide, it will then go into an S phase. In the S phase, we have DNA replication. So the DNA will make a copy of itself. Then it will go into what we call a G2 
growth phase, and this is growth for division. So now the cell is getting bigger, it's replicating organelles that are needed in the new cells, that sort of thing. G1S and G2 are collectively called interphase. Okay, so sometimes you'll read something, something going on during interphase. That is G1S or G2, somewhere in there. After the G2 phase, there'll be a checkpoint to see if everything is good and ready to divide. If it is, it will go into mitosis. Mitosis, the definition, is nuclear division. After mitosis is complete, we'll go cytokinesis. Cytokinesis definition is cytoplasmic division. At that point, we'll have two uh, cells. Let's look at mitosis and cytokinesis now. Mitosis starts with what we call prophase. In prophase, you get the chromosomes condensed so you can see them, designated by the little different colored X's. The nuclear envelope dissolves. And the Golgi and ER are dispersed, meaning they separate out. You also see the formation of spindle fibers starting. I didn't put that on there. After prophase is metaphase and metaphase, they line up in the center or equator of the cell. The chromosomes do. And those chromosomes are connected to spindle fibers. They're connected to spindle fibers at the kinetochore. If you think back to the previous slide, the kinetochore, that's where they'll be connected. After metaphase, we have anaphase. In anaphase, the, the centromeres degrade, which allows those chromosomes to be pulled apart. And the chromo chromosomes then, connected to those spindle fibers, will be pulled to opposite poles of the cell. Then we go into telophase. In telophase, the uh, nuclear envelopes start to reform. The Golgi and ER will reform in each side of the cell. And once again, you can still see those chromosomes in there uh, as they start to form those new cells. And then the last step, cytokinesis takes place. In animals, cytokinesis takes place by a what we call a cleavage furrow. It's actually protein bands that will start to condense and condense and pull in and tighten until eventually it will completely squeeze that middle section until those become two cells. The cell membranes will join together um, or separate right there and become two cells. In plants, you'll get this, uh, these sections forming in the middle right here called cell plates. Now this happens because remember a plant cell has a cell wall. So a cell plate will start to form in the Golgi complex. The Golgi complex will actually have a Golgi membrane around these and these cell plates will form and they'll form that length, that width of the cell right there and then eventually that cell plate will fuse together and become the uh, cell wall and the cell membrane will be on the inside that was that Golgi membrane. So it uses the Golgi complex to make a cell plate that will divide the plant cell in two.